Hey solar folks, Jeremy Allen here at Wholesale Solar. Did you know there are multiple types of lithium chemistries? Our friend David Norman is here from Discover today to tell us a little bit more about these different technologies. All the chemistries that are out there have all been developed and you know, found for applications for use to ideally suit what they're good for. The common electronics you'd find in an iPhone or Bluetooth headsets or anything like that, that's cobalt variations, okay? And they're used because they have super high energy density. If you want to make a push to make devices small, you have to find small energy storage for these. They work great as long as they are taken care of and managed really well. You've probably seen examples of you know, consumer electronics that go volcanic and lava through a table. That chemistry is unstable. If it's charged too hard uh, or exposed to conditions that it doesn't like, that's the thermal runaway that presents itself. The next major category, and this would leak over into the solar field, the solar realm, would be uh, the NMC chemistry, which is just nickel manganese cobalt. And uh, that chemistry is commonly or most commonly used in automotive packs with the trend toward electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. NMC is the chemistry that is used most widely for those and that's because it's very versatile. Either for specific power or specific energy, it can be configured for really maximum potential in either one of those environments. The trouble as it relates to solar applications is that it can't do both and you really need both of those specific energy and specific power for a solar battery. Companies like Tesla, uh, Daimler, Nissan, they are have all developed NMC batteries for use in their automotive applications and it makes perfect sense, great battery for those. They found a second home or second life to try and drive volumes and reduce costs uh, by trying to use them in solar applications. And for certain solar applications, they're great. But for somebody living off-grid and dependent only on energy storage uh, for all their power, it's not ideal. A company that's going to build purpose-built batteries for solar applications is going to choose LFP or lithium ferrophosphate batteries uh, as a chemistry every time. It's the least volatile of the uh, lithium chemistries, which means it allows for very hard charging, very hard discharging, and the ability to handle a wide thermal environment. It's very stable in terms of its characteristics. Uh, in fact, you know, we've done destructive testing on these batteries, dead shorting, you know, basically any abuse you can think of that you would do to a lithium battery, we've done to these. And the worst case scenario is really that there's some discoloration and the BMS turns off. The cells themselves are incredibly stable. We happen to use cylindrical cells. There's uh, pouches and prismatic as well. It really doesn't matter, but for defining form factor, uh, the actual performance of the, of the different configurations means nothing. Uh, battery specs are battery specs.